so part of what we saw in the context of our study in orgasmic meditation, uh, which may be the, the quickest answer to your question, is that um, while we see certain areas of the brain that seem to be affected that we also have seen in other types of meditative practices, like changes in the parietal lobe and the frontal lobe that are associated with that sense of oneness and a sense of uh, sort of surrendering and connecting and so forth, um, there were also some changes that occurred in some very uh, core areas of the brain, which, which have been looked at as being involved in sexual arousal and sexual experience. Now, interestingly, they are different. It, it, it does not look like, you know, just sexual arousal either. Um, that, that is a very different kind of look than what we saw in the orgasmic meditation study. So, you know, it, 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 to me, orgasmic meditation really does represent a kind of true hybrid there. It's kind of utilizing that sexual energy, so to speak, which kind of then drives these higher areas, but then the experiences that you can have, uh, ultimately do have a lot in common, uh, with the spirituality and that the, hence the argument of it's kind of the, the same basic platform that you're working on, but you also raised to me, what's one of my favorite uh, topic, so to speak, in this whole field that's called neurotheology, uh, mm. which is, I really think about it as this big jigsaw puzzle. And so there are many different avenues that you can get to, you know, that you can kind of go down to get to different spiritual experiences. And they, you know, you mentioned a whole bunch of them, psychedelics and near-death experiences and meditation and orgasm, you know, uh, orgasmic meditation and so forth. So uh, there are many different pathways to, to these kinds of experiences. Uh, and and what I have actually tried to elaborate in our research is this very complex network of structures that, depending on what you do, you kind of connect in in different ways. And so, uh, you know, if you're doing a meditation practice, uh, a, a, a sort of a, a pure concentration meditation practice where you're just concentrating on something, you know, concentrating on an image. Well, that's a little bit more of a top down kind of process. You know, you're just kind of using your frontal lobes, you're concentrating on the object, and then you start to generate all these changes. I think that what's interesting about sexual experience, you know, using sexual energy as, as part of that process is it kind of drives the process a little bit more from the bottom up, mm. uh, as, so to speak, because it's coming from your autonomic nervous system. It's, it's affecting some of these very core areas of the brain, like the hypothalamus and the thalamus uh, and the brainstem, which really regulates sexuality. But then as they can then kind of connect up into the brain, you can kind of lead to these same kinds of processes. And in fact, that's part of how rituals themselves work. I mean, the whole actual process of the mating ritual is that it starts by, you know, creating that connection, creating that identification. But as it proceeds, the rhythmicity is what ultimately leads to sexual peaks, you know, sexual climax or orgasm. Um, and so the, you know, the whole process can unfold. And then that's part of what also drives that whole uh, experience. So I think there's a tremendous amount of overlap between all of them, but there also can be, you know, unique elements. And, and I think part of what can be helpful is, you know, there are ways of facilitating these experiences. So uh, one could make the argument, would you rather, you know, spend 30 years in a Zen monastery meditating on, you know, uh, a Zen koan about one hand clapping until you find enlightenment or would you rather, you know, try to to jumpstart the process, if you will, uh, by using some some other avenue that might be faster? And I think, you know, something like sexual energy might be able to do that. Certainly, the Kundalini approaches and and the tantric yogas and uh, so forth uh, utilize that approach uh, with an orgasmic meditation. Similarly, to try to do that in a way that that facilitates that experience.